So uh, those of you that are here, uh, this is a webinar for those of you that are considering YLOPO. And we're going to talk about the NAR settlement. But before we get started, we're going to give everybody a minute or two to get on here. Um, why don't you put in the chat where you are located? We'd love to see kind of where you guys all are. And, um, and I've uh, scrolled through the names to see if I uh, recognize uh, any in here. So, yeah, we'd love to know where you guys are at. Uh, throw it in the chat. Um, and then we'll get started here in just a little bit. Gold neighbor, Andy. I'm right downtown Denver, so we got a neighbor here, Austin. Oh, Lex, got it, love it. All right, sweet. Phoenix. Uh, I'm in Denver, just so everybody knows. Barry, I'm a, your home. It looks like you're at your office. I'm in Virginia Beach. Yep. Why don't we take a second to uh, um, try to explain where Virginia Beach is to everybody who doesn't know where um, wh who we are. You know, they don't, they don't know who these people don't know who we are. So we should probably tell them like who we are. So we are, we work for Wailopo. Uh, we're called Realtors in Residence. So Wailopo hired us uh, several years ago to help, help with product, training, processes, all that stuff. They wanted subject matter experts. So I run a team in Virginia Beach. I've been in real estate since I was 18. I'm 43. So 25 years I have been in real estate and I've got 80 agents and I've scaled my business off of the Wailopo platform. Gabe, you've been in real estate, what, like 40 years, 50? <laughs> so rude. So rude. Uh, 60. No, uh, <laughs> 21. No, don't encourage him. I see a laughing emoji. Do not encourage him. And first of all, you sign up with Wailopo, you're going to be dealing with more of this all the time. <laughs> Um, no, about 22 years, uh, started in Boise, uh, -huh. uh in O2. Okay. And, uh, like you, uh, you know, a lot of real estate background, uh, even on the tech side, when the co-founders Firepoint running it, exited that now using, um, you know, follow a boss, but running a few different teams. We've moved everything over into Robert Slack, uh, and just really working on that expansion really on, on, you know, this primary tech stack of Y Lopo uh, and, and follow a boss. And, you know, and, and like Barry said, a big part of what we do in our day to day is uh, yes, we're, we're talking to a lot of uh, current users or, or thinking about users, but it's how we're using it in our day to day. How are we working with other teams and helping them get the most out of it? So it's not just, you know, an expense line item on, on your, uh, you know, monthly invoices, but an ROI and, yeah. and product right now, taking whether it's new product, we're working on some really exciting things. I think we're going to uh, highlight a couple today, but they even some of the previous existing product and how do we bring it into what we need in 2024, right? Because it's different than shit, different than even six months ago than what we needed from a year ago. So constantly uh, really just down in the trenches on how we would do this with the product team, with the engineers like hey that's great but this is how we use it this is mm -hmm. what we need it to do um yeah. and and then really just you know helping with fashionable footwear and eyewear as well so you guys look good while you're doing yeah that. yeah always always trying to help um so i love how gabe you know he just kind of subtly brought up the fact you know co-founded a technology company runs teams in several states um, and so I, I went, we went into all that, right. Um, want to make sure they heard that. Cause you kind of, you don't, you don't like, you know, that that's a big deal. Um, we are here to help lead you guys, right. We're running very successful businesses, working for multiple companies, and we are navigating this NAR settlement. I brought up that I've been in real estate 25 years personally, because I've seen a lot, 2008 wrecked me financially, like absolutely obliterated me because I didn't pivot. I decided that I would do what I had always done. And I had hoped that things would go back to normal. So from 2001 through 2007, things were really good for me, right? I stick a sign in the yard, people call. I had a successful business that way. But when 2008 hit, I continued running the same ads, doing the same uh, marketing efforts. And I did not make any money in 2008. I worked all year and I did not make any money. So from 2012 to 2020, I experienced exceptional growth. And that was hard in different ways. I prefer that hard, to be honest with you. 
But then 2020 hit, right? COVID, our area shut down. And I thought about 2008 and I said, man, like, I feel like I've been in this type of environment before. I'm not going to sit on my hands. And my team very quickly adapted their processes. Zoom wasn't a verb yet. We decided to leverage Facebook Messenger. We did, we showed homes via Facebook Messenger video with our leads. We crushed it in 2020, like did fantastic, right? Since that time, we've had inventory shortages, high interest rates, lots of problems. I want you guys to know something. Gabe and I have been thinking about the NAR settlement for almost a year, definitely for six months hard, but over six months to a year now, our team has processes in place. We are thriving in the midst of this environment and these things. And I'm not happy to say this, okay? It actually is sad, but a lot of agents are not going to change, okay? They're just not. And I feel like the weakest demographic of realtors and real estate agents was the buyer's agent. Not that they're weak, but it's just, they were the ones that didn't have to talk about compensation in my market, right? They, they could just be like, oh yeah, don't worry about it. The seller pays me. And then as they got experience, at least these, this is for my 80 agents, then they would work up to working with sellers where they can sit in front of somebody and say, yeah, this is my rate of pay. Those agents, because of the NAR settlement, those buyer's agents, if they don't understand their value proposition, if they don't know how to market themselves, they are going to die on the vine. And so for you guys that are about to go over this webinar, this is a webinar where we're talking about the products that we've built and the innovations that we've started to develop in light of the NAR settlement. And I want to encourage all you guys, and Gabe, I'd love for you to speak to this as well. All of you are going to have a decision to make. Either you're going to have to sit on your hands like I did in 2008 and wait around and hope that things get better, or you are going to have to pivot. And I aggressively pivot because I've decided I'm not going to wait for it. I'm not going to be a victim to anything. I'm going to, because I, I can't control the world around me. All I can control is how I respond. And so as we go through these products, I just want, I wanted to like season it with this concept that you have to control your destiny. You can't wait for the world to change around you. You've got to make it change for yourself. You know what I'm saying, Gabe? Yeah, no, no, I agree. And, and, and I'm curious and we're going to get it. We promise we're going to get into what we kind of got here. We get on soapbox, <laughs> but you know, Barry and I are both in states uh, where we've done this for a while. We've had buyers reps uh, in Idaho. We've had these signs for a long time. Uh, so not a massive change. But subtle changes, right? I mean, we're constantly working on what are the tools we're using, what we're saying. I was, and I haven't, maybe I'll show this actually here in a little bit, but like even down to where our buyer's agency agreement, uh, you know, we all work with them. They're written in, in legal attorney language to where now I have a secondary document where it's written as if I was just saying it, right? And I'm yeah. literally in here editing this now because we're putting together a presentation on how we would recommend doing this. So it's not even just what we're doing in our teams, but also providing these materials for you. So as the market's shifting and as it's changing, you guys at least have a blueprint or a starting point to go off of going, okay, I like this and like this. And I like this because Gabe provided it. This stuff varies is okay, but I need to edit it and make it right. better uh, and keep score that, you know, which ones you like better because you're, you're going to you're adopt some of those in. But that's a great example because because of the NAR settlement, the rate of commission, generally speaking, is now a discussion in a way that it hadn't been previously. Part of that is because MLSs are removing or adding different boxes, different fields. It's in the news. And so we all are having clients bringing it up in new ways. And what Gabe just said was, yeah, we've got the legalese, but how can I normalize this verbiage and share it with my team? And so um, and, and so let's I'm getting ready to still steal some of the thunder. So let me go ahead and share my screen. And we'll start talking about in light of these changes. Is it okay if I present it this way? Or maybe I'll go full screen. Actually, uh, I, we have people managing the chat. Yeah. Can you can you see this? Is this okay? Yeah. All right. So uh, Wilopo has been wait, around. Wait, I'm going to cut you off after I said yes. Really quick. Sorry, guys. Uh, a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, yes, this is being recorded. Uh, it'll get sent to you. So if you register for this, you're going to get it back. And if mm -hmm. you do have questions on this, or you know, because we're going to go through some. Uh, our current features, things we've done down below, use the Q&A, throw it in there. Uh, we'd love to answer some questions as we go through if something doesn't make sense. Uh, please post that so we can address it while we've got it up. All right, All now I've got I one more you. interrupt or I'm you're, or you're going to be, I'm going to mute right. you. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Interrupt me all you want. Wilopo is a history we adapt really quickly. 
a lot of times these tech companies are so big that they can't really adapt, right? Ylopo, uh, is not, this isn't just a new thing. <laughs> like Ylopo has been this way for a really long time. It's, it's kind of the DNA of the company. So uh, Gabe and I are not attorneys. We are not legal experts. This is actually information from the Ylopo executive team. Uh, this, is, this is their summation of the situation at hand that uh, currently based on their understanding of the, uh, the, the case, and um, of course it's still being uh, appealed, but sellers can still offer to pay buyer agent commissions via a listing agreement. But the, the argument is you can't publish it in the MLS, right? So there's still, there's still this concept of sellers still paying for buyer agency. Um, and that generally speaking, I know it's been this way in Virginia for a decade, buyer agent agreements will be good for your efficiency and for your business. And I found this to be true for a long time. How about you? I mean, would you say the same, Gabe? Yeah, I mean, I mean, anytime, right? I think anytime that we have an understanding of what our obligations are to our consumers and they have an understanding of what it is in our working relationship, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to be more efficient, right? Uh, do we get in bad habits sometimes? And I'll, I'll, I'll throw myself when I was still producing. Yeah. Uh, not getting that uh, BBA signed until I was writing the offer. Yes, is it the best way? No. But as we are now changing what we've been doing as recently as even six months ago, right? Mm -hmm. We have got to get more efficient. And I think some of the tools that we're going to highlight here, and I think we put together some stats as well, but yes. to show you by, you know, some of these changes coming as scary as they are and direct, they will be good for those that adopt and understand because as Barry said, most of these agents aren't going to change what they were doing or improve, or we already know it, right? 80% prior weren't even up to par with what they needed to be doing. This is going to add another layer. It's right. opportunity for those of us that are willing to do it. And especially if our tech partners, right? Our tech stack is mm -hmm. giving us tools to make this easier. Now we have a leg up on the competition because we're not having to now innovate and find all this. It's more attend, learn, adopt, implement, right? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's a mindset, folks. If you're writing notes down, you need to have a mindset of you're going to figure it out. If you don't have that mindset, I guarantee you, you'll be a victim. All right. So this is actually really interesting. So I'm going to go ahead, right? So here's one where a scenario where uh, let's say all these changes your, your average commission rate gets cut in half. It's a nightmare. You're used to 3%. Now it's one and a half. The next slide is your commission went from 3% to 2%. And then the last, last example, your commission went, uh, did not go down at all. So Howard is just, uh, he, he is, um, you know, I would not say this in front of him, but in many ways he's a genius. Okay. Um, and uh, has a track record of building million dollar businesses. Wailopo is not his first and he's directly involved. He sat down with us and he said, look, if you have 10 prospects, 10 clients, and you weren't getting buyer agent agreements signed ever with anybody, and let's say on average, you spent 25 hours per client working with them, showing homes, meeting them for coffee, nurturing them, right? Well, you spent 25 hours, just as an example, per client, that's 250 hours. That's that green box there. Well, out of the 10, let's say five dropped off, they weren't approved, they worked with another agent, they moved. That means that you had five clients that you got closed out of 10. And if your average sales price was 500,000 at a commission rate of two and a half, your gross dollars earned would be $12,500 per deal, which is $62,500 off of those five clients. That means if you spent 250 hours with 10 clients, you earned, uh, you had a rate of pay at $250 an hour. Well, that's how it always was. Most of you weren't getting agreements signed. Well, now in this new world, you're going to try to get agreements signed with everybody. And let's be honest, not everybody's going to sign an agreement. So out of 10 prospects using the same math, only five of them said, you know what, Barry, I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to work with you. Uh, let's go ahead and get that agreement signed. You get them with the lender, you formalize, you crystallize the relationship, right? That they're locked in. You still spend 25 hours per client, but now instead of spending 250 working with everybody, generally, you focus your time on the people that are committed to you. So now you did 125 hours worth of work with five clients at an average price of 500,000. 
And if your commission rate got cut down 40% in this example, this is like a really rough example. So your commission rate, even though you locked in those five clients, we're all scared, you know, our commission's going down, what's going to happen? And now you went from being used to two and a half percent to now one and a half percent. Your gross dollars earned per deal is now $7,500. That's less. You were used to $12,500. So your total dollars earned is 37,500, but you only work 25 hours for those five clients. Now you're still earning $300 an hour. So the idea here is this, the buyer broker agreement can act as a filter so that you can focus your time on the right client that's going to realize income, right? Because the hourly rate in this, to be honest with you, I don't think this is going to happen. I don't think our commission is going to go down 40%. Okay. But even if it did, you would still be making more per hour. And then look at the math. If it went down from two and a half to 2%, your rate of pay goes up to $400 an hour. That's the blue, uh, blue box at the bottom. And then the last slide, if commissions don't change at all, which I think they're going to change a little bit, just because I know salespeople and a lot of them don't have a good value proposition. And so I think just generally speaking, a lot of them are going to give away money. But if it doesn't go down at all, now you're earning $500 an hour. So this buyer broker agreement in the front end actually can work to your advantage by reducing wasted time. And I think you found this to be true as well, right, Gabe? Yeah, I mean, it's all about efficiency, right? And what we're wanting to do here too is uh, we need to focus on the opportunities, what's coming. I think there's a lot of fear. Uh, there's definitely some uncertainty, right? Because we don't know what we don't know, but we're already seeing changes uh, as far as you know, Fannie and Freddie allowing uh, uh, contributions now outside the maxes and all that. And we're not here to interpret all that. But I think as you're going, as we go through the initial slides, what you see is we're going to focus on the, the 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 highlights and the positive opportunities that are in front of us and make sure that each of you have the tools that you need to get more additional sellers if that's what you want to get this, to have the right buyer presentation. If you don't already have one uh, at your fingertips, to have something to put in front of buddy, uh, in front of somebody to show your value, to get these signed so right. that you are in essence working less for the same amount of money or at least getting a higher rate of pay for the time that you're putting in because you're no longer now chasing people for every opportunity that are not committed to ensure that you get paid for your time, right? Exactly. And that's, that's one of the commitments that Barry and myself, the other realtor and residents, you know, Livia, Matt, all those have put into our jobs here is making sure that these tools are working for you guys because we're testing, Barry and I are testing these ourselves. So, I mean, the buyer's pres that I don't know if we're going to show an example of it. I know we're, we're talking about it, but these are coming out of what we're using, right? Leveraging other agents and stuff that we are meeting with that are using this tech stack to get things that they're willing to share to bring in so that you right. guys can make sure that you're literally thriving in this changing environment that we'll be seeing over the next few months. Uh, because there will be those that thrive and there will be some that just that just check out. So to your point, Gabe, what we just did was we just shared some math. We, we, we talked a little bit about motivation, being a victim, not a victor, pivoting. I shared my story. Now we've gone over how going over the buyer broker agreement, this new change in your business can work as a filter to avoid wasted time. What we're about to do is we're about to say, okay, cool, that's great. What does a technology company have to do with this? We are building products around this fact. So because we believe this math to be true, Ylopo is engineering a series of products and rollouts to help arm you to ensure that you get these fire, five buyer agent agreements signed so that your hourly rate doesn't go down. Because when you win, we win. It's a very symbiotic relationship. We have shared interests here. Right. And that's why this this slide to me is so fascinating. Yeah. Um, and, but, and to that, Barry, I mean, and really what we're getting at is we have got to make sure that we are leveraging our tech stack to its fullest capability. Right. And that really is understanding that we have got to, as we talk about top and middle funnel leads as we're bringing it in, we all love leads that are ready to come in. They're at the bottom of the funnel, ready to, uh, you know, go transact. I just got a text uh, from Tom a minute ago that he just got a great one ready to go. We love those, right? But we also need to be nurturing. And what I really want to make sure as we're going through some of these, uh, the tool set as we're going through is a lot of this is in place in this tech stack. So as we're taking these top of funnel, middle of funnel leads, 
it's everything that's going is helping you create some brand awareness, be a familiar name and a familiar face service to them because we know that you're either going to be meeting in front of them because they're a potential seller to get them to sign on to hire you for the marketing plan and the services you provide, or even on the buy side. And that is going to be easier if they've been hearing from you over time as they're getting used to it. You're now not a stranger asking them to sit down and sign a contract to hire on. You have been there throughout this course of journey, top of mind, nudging them, whatever it is along the way that you're now getting in there. And those other agents that are just waiting for them to raise their hand and assume that they're going to hire them when they've never seen or heard from them before, it's not going to happen. We've got to nurture these leads through the process on the buy and sell side. And that's what this tech stack does, right? So right. ever before, we've got to make sure that we've got those people coming back, whether we generated them a year ago, two years ago, or yesterday and nurture them for the next year. And, and, and like... Gabe, you know, you're going over that. And as I was listening to you, um, I, you know, I started to think about how, how unique it is to have a team of machine learning experts, engineers, developers, website, marketing funnel geniuses listening to you and I about what our needs are. So they're, they're using their genius, not in a crystal tower far away, but they're in the weeds with us. And in that vein, it is my professional opinion that middle of funnel and top of funnel leads have never been more important to master than right now. Yeah. Historically, we pay more money for people that are bottom of funnel. That means they have clarity on what their needs are. They've picked out a house. They have a deadline that they need to move by. We don't mind giving 40% of our commission or $800 a lead because we can just call them and say, when would you like to see a home? And historically, that's kind of been the lead source that most agents gravitate towards. And we've avoided the leads from Google and Facebook because when you call them, they lack clarity. And you ask them, what kind of home do you want? They say, I don't know, call me in a year. Well, now with new conversation processes and scripting that we've provided Yloco users, you're, you're now capitalizing on the fact that they lack clarity because now you can shape the narrative. You can teach the consumer, I want to meet with you. This is my respective rate of pay. Please sign here. You're yeah. now able to shape that relationship and teach them because they lack certainty. They lack clarity. They don't know what they want yet. They haven't picked out a home. They don't know how any of this works. And you're capturing them right at the right moment. So you guys have a unique opportunity to shape the narrative and build out a massive pipeline using this strategy. You've been doing this for years, Gabe. Yeah, yeah. I want to go to the next uh, slide too, because really what we're also wanting to make sure is that's all great, but do you have the right tech? Do you have the right, do you have AI, the products, the coaching, the education, the ongoing courses that are going on? Uh, in addition, I know on here, uh, you know, live, right? We Everything's great. We love Zoom. We love all the courses that we're doing um, and all that, but also where are we getting together? a like-minded set of people who are using the same tech stack mm -hmm. and not inviting vendors, not bringing people to sell you crap, but mm -hmm. to literally bring on people, Barry and I, uh, Tiffany Galzanis, a few others are working for the last couple of months uh, for this Austin summit to literally comb through interview one-on-one -on -one people that we're putting on stage. What are you using? How are you finding success with this to make sure that you guys have people to go to to not sell you other stuff, you're using the same tech stack, but now how do we implement it and use it so you don't have to reinvent what already has been done? You just have to fine tune it and adapt it to what your business needs are and where you are, right? Yeah. It's easy to jump on these calls and everything and hear the new shiny object and all that, but if it's not solving your pain and you're not meeting the people who are where you're at, we have a lot of distractions. They get yeah. expensive, frustrating, stressful, all that. So really one of our commitments, whether it's NAR, the lawsuit, whether it's just changing uh, markets, interest rates, everything, our commitment and implications of the market is making sure that we're providing state-of-the-art tech products, AI, coaching, education. And then I you know, personally love the get-togethers where we're doing this, but in a hands-on, laptops open learning environment for you to keep getting the most out of your system. Yeah, the the, the event in Austin, May 6th and 7th, um, it, you know, uh, it's not... Like, oh, you can be amazing. We all need to hear we're amazing sometimes, okay? Like, but if you, if that's the conference that you need, there's a lot of other conferences that you can go to. This is a very tactical two days where we want your computer open. We want 
We want an environment where you can click a button and have a CS person, you know, answer your questions. We want to teach you how to use these tools. For example, one of them that I'm really hyped about is helping my agents convert buyer agency agreements into clients, right? So we're going to teach you how to sit down with a buyer and go over, this is why you should sign an agreement with me. And yes, this is my respective rate of pay. We're going to teach you that stuff, right? So it's not just rah, rah, it's you're going to go home and make more money as a result. Um, so, so some things that we're doing, uh, you know, as a change, some tools that we're adding to support the changes in the industry. First is a course on how you can communicate with buyers and sellers, and it's built by Gabe and I, right? The brainchild behind it is that we, we, we saw a need that agents had difficulty communicating their value proposition when in regards to buyer agency. They felt guilty. They felt embarrassed that they had to bring up their rate of pay. That's a mindset issue. We need to teach you how to talk to the consumer in a way that is confident and you're not apologetic for, for being compensated. What other industry do you feel bad for getting a paycheck, right? <laughs> and, but for some reason, sitting down with a buyer, you're like, I'm sorry. So we're, we're going to teach you, and it's the same content that we teach our agents. And I'll tell you the processes in this course for the last 60 days, my agents are setting over 500 appointments with buyers a month, 500. It's hard to believe we're crushing it with these processes. Um, the microsites, right, Gabe? Uh, you know, we've been working on those as well. Yeah. I mean, and I think we got, we're going to highlight a couple of the, uh, these tools that we're working on as well coming up, but you know, and I'm curious, I mean, we got 40 some people on here. Uh, twice as many I thought we were going to have. I mean, if you were to look at your database, do you have unconverted? Hopefully you have a database. Hopefully you have your, your people somewhere, right? Do you have unconverted people? Do you have past clients, SOI, lead uh, generation from where, whatever site, whether it's Google or Zillow, whatever it is in there, but not being nurtured? Do you have agents on your team or do you yourself not have weekly coaching or tools to help understand? I, I'm sure if you're face-to-face, -face, they're ready to go. Everybody on here, you probably kill it, right? But how do I get more of those face-to-face -face opportunities? How do I get more at bats? Mm -hmm. Really, is what all of this is for. And it is, it, and it like it says weekly, but there, almost that should say daily, right? Daily. I mean, yeah, it's daily. Every day we have something going on that's being led by agents using this tool. Uh, and then I know you and I are working on a course. I think it's the the next slide here. I'm really excited about getting this out there. And we're going to go in, I think, even deeper uh, into Austin on this. You were just kind of highlighting a little bit. But I mean, this is going to be a, a tool that we're building that is at people's fingertips. Yeah. And, and what I love about this course is that it's actually teaching you as an agent to um, use getting an agency agreement signed as a part of the lead conversion process. So I'm going to teach you the playbook. Gabe and I are going to teach you the playbook that our agents are using to set buyer um, buyer agent presentations. So we get the lead on the phone. They're like, I don't know what I want. We're like, oh, that's so amazing. I'm so glad that I'm talking to you right now. I need to meet with you. And we go through the talk tracks of how to talk to the consumer, set up an appointment with someone that doesn't think they're ready to talk to an agent. That's the secret. This yeah. course is free, by the way, when you're a Wilopo customer. So this isn't like, we're not going to, we're not nickel and diming you as a Wilopo customer. We are empowering you to grow your business. We're also doing one for uh, listings. A lot of you have not really built out a big, robust listing inventory, especially with leads, maybe with your sphere. And so we're going to teach you how to work these leads, how to talk to the seller leads, because we've got a whole seller lead component to the Wilopo platform now that's incredible. And we're going to teach you how to convert those leads. Um, and hopefully, Gabe, I can get you to wear those green shoes if you still have them. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, one, of, yeah. one of many. One of many. I, it, what's great about these courses, too, and I don't this might not work. We, uh, uh, da, 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 Stop sharing? Uh, no, it's all right. Part of what we're going to do in this, too, just examples, because we're going to be putting out something, Barry. I'm going to put in examples of, you know, it'll have scripts in there. It's going to have videos. How do we explain these things? What are common objections? We're literally building this in. So also, and I, I don't know if we have team leads on here or team agents. But we really want to build this to where whether you're a team agent or a team lead, you've got the tools in here to, to, to go crush it. Love it. Love it. Uh, so this, I, I, man, I'm so excited about this uh, buyer presentation toolkit. 
uh, like, you know, normally when you think about buyer presentations, it's like a PDF, whether it's on your tablet or you've printed it out, but it's like a fixed document. It's probably really pretty. And it's got like an outline of the process and a little blurb about you. And it's just something that's fixed. And what we did was we decided to take uh, relevant market data uh, about your general market. So interest rates or, um, you know, recent sales, average sales prices, things like that. Uh, your recent sales in the local marketplace, uh, other dynamic data about your market and your performance as a team owner or as an individual agent. And we're injecting it into this document. So you're going to be able to go onto the website, punch in some information about yourself, click a button, and it's going to pull in all of this live data for you in a beautiful laid out presentation. That's a free tool for all of Wilopo customers. And so if you have trouble sitting down with consumers, with homeowners and home buyers, and talking about your value proposition, this document is literally as if Gabe and I were sitting with you in the living room with this client, going through key data points so that you can very easily and authoritatively share your value proposition. I think this is super important, don't you, Gabe? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I love it. Again, we've been doing uh, BBAs for quite a while. So we had a version of this that we've, we've been using, but in light of just different things, we're actually adapting and changing. It was as great as a lot of what we've been doing and what you're doing has really kind of helped us create and design this. But now I love that we're going to have it at the fingertips of every agent to basically go in with a few literally clicks. They're going to have a PDF version. They'll have... Uh, email version of all of this right at their fingertips that's branded with our colors, our logos, and what we do as a team and as a as a brokerage and what we offer. Yeah, um, actually, I forgot to say this in the beginning, just a housekeeping item. I did ask members of uh, the sales team to be on this webinar. There's, uh, I think, I know there's at least one. Um, if while we're talking about this, you're like, oh man, I've got a question about this. Can someone give me more information, a demo? Just put it in the chat. Just say, can someone reach out to me? And somebody from the team will will mention it to you. I just know sometimes, you know, we're we're on this webinar and, and you get excited and, and uh, sometimes overwhelmed, to be honest with you. Um, so this is another item that we're working on that I'm really excited about. This is the Maverick sales coach, right? I'm going to go ahead and play like 15 seconds of me trying to call a robot and get them to sign a buyer broker agreement. All right. Hold on. Before you play though, Barry, before you play all right, I because I, I know our, I know our audience. Oh, we lost lost the screen share, but uh, I I, uh, I know as as an industry we tend to uh, uh, multitask uh, quite a bit. So I just want to make sure if you are multitasking, I really want you guys to listen to this because I think most teams, most agents, most team leads struggle in role playing. It's you're uncomfortable. You're wanting this. I want you guys to really listen to this because this is one tool that is going to solve so much of this for the team leads and for the agents when it comes to understanding and role-playing and getting these signed. Hello, this is Jesse. Who is this? Hey, Jesse. This is Barry Jenkins with Better Homes and Gardens. Uh, I know that we already went over the home buying process, but I know you had some questions about the buyer broker agreement. Hey, Barry. Yeah, I remember our discussion. I'm still not sure about signing a buyer broker agreement. I don't want to be locked into one agent. I completely understand. In Virginia, they actually require that we sign uh, an agreement so that my obligations to you as your agent are clear and in writing and you know what your rights are. I'm sure you wouldn't want to do anything illegal, right? <clears throat> I see your point. It does make sense to have everything in writing for clarity and to stay within the legal requirements. I guess that makes sense. Exactly. So what I'll be doing is by going over the terms of the agreement, you know what your rights are. So you know if I'm serving you appropriately or if I'm dropping the ball. I think we both can agree that having clarity around what your rights are as a home buyer is very important. Yeah, clarity is definitely important. I want to make sure I understand my rights as a home buyer and that you're providing me with the right level of service. So yeah, I can see the value. In so we'll stop there. One of the things that, so my team has been using this 
AI sales coach now for about 60 days as we've been testing it. What we found, it's kind of like working out with ankle weights. Like if you're in the gym, I used to play basketball, I'd wear ankle weights. It makes it more difficult so that then when it comes game time, you don't have the weights, you can run a little bit faster. AI needs you to be a closer. <laughs> it's uncomfortable. Like me telling a consumer, you don't want to do anything illegal. Like that's not something that I probably would lead with. But what we've discovered with this AI sales coach is that it needs you to be clear, clear and concise and bold. Otherwise it just breaks you in half. Like it just like, you're not, you're not going to get the appointment. And so what my agents have been doing is calling this number and practicing with AI. And it actually has moved the needle in their ability to convert for appointments. And so, so I want to make, oh, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. So I want to make sure they're clear. So what your agents are able to do, not on the sales meeting, not in front of everybody else, they can call this number mm -hmm. and the AI, the robot is the consumer and they can just practice their spiel. Nobody's yep. listening in on it. Nobody's there. It's just, they're getting over. So we threw the number on there. Um, so you guys can even play around with it, test it out a little bit as well to get a feel for it. I mean, this is always evolving and changing as well and getting better, but this is available for the for the BBA. This is available for internet leads. This is available like we've been playing with a different a bunch of different versions of this to where now our agents uh, can literally just call in and this is now part of the role playing, right? It can be required that they call in five different times or call these. So I want to make sure you guys are grasping. This takes a lot of the uncomfortableness of role playing off the table. It just it just makes it so much easier. And we know that, that they've got to get better at this or they're just not going to get get the deal signed. Yeah. And, and it's funny, you know, even though it's a robot that they're talking to, my agents still have a little bit of anxiety when they're calling the number, but, um, but it actually, it's, it's much easier for them to get their reps in and practicing. And so this is just another innovation, a recent innovation of Ylopos to try to help its users become more effective in the new environment that we're in to continue to make sales. So now as we transition, we also realize that along with the changes in the buyer agency and the, in light of the NAR settlement, we also realize that getting listings is, has never been more important, right? It's, it's incredibly important to get listings. And so we've redesigned from the ground up how we generate seller leads and more importantly, in my opinion, how we nurture seller leads to ensure that they're going to work with you. Um, you're going to see this QR code, I think two more times, but if you do want a demo of the seller experience, you can get a, you can scan that with your phone. I believe Gabe, we're going to have you share uh, yeah. an example seller alert. So I'll stop sharing. Yeah. So, um, you know, nothing as far as the idea different here, but what we really wanted to do is, you know, enhance what we've been doing. We've been sending home bot reports, emails going out. Um, but due to uh, API limitations and just the ability to sharing what people, these potential sellers leads are actually doing. Uh, Barry and I spent a lot of time with the product team uh, at Ylopo, making sure that as we re redesign a better seller experience, we're able to go in and actually let me pull up uh, and create something that's more interactive, a little bit lighter looking to get clicks. We need people opening these. Otherwise, the effort is lost, right? So, um, you know, we've been using HomeBot for quite a bit. The email structure, uh, you know, we had a good open rate, right? We had a great open rate. We weren't unhappy with that. It was really coming to visibility, but we still wanted to make it better. So the, the email format, not a lot has changed. It's still um, a dynamic subject line that's constantly changing between revising the value report, finding homes in the area. This is constantly updating. But going with a uh, an interactive image on here that's showing the different parts, a lighter color, a little bit easier to see. Uh, bottom half of this email hasn't changed. But what we're seeing is a higher click rate. Uh, before, this was a large kind of grayed out, ominous, dark gray box. Uh, we've just made it a bit more interactive and catching your eye inside the email in the preview of whatever uh, email app that you're using, right? Single click going into this report. And a couple of huge things that we've loved. Uh, right off the bat at the top, branding the assigned agent. So this is my test lead in there and I'll show you front and back end, but branding the agent. So any of you on Teams as it's coming through, um, literally branding that agent that's assigned to the lead and what's going on, that address. 
uh, and then getting right into the heart of the report. And we broke this report into kind of sections into these little tiles. And each tile is a different um, call to action, right? So somebody may come in and we, we understand uh, AVMs are off, right? Uh, we like to give a, a span on these. We've got one in here. Uh, we've got a high and a low. We give them a call to action where they can literally come in and type in their own value, hit save, right? We let them do that. When this happens, the agent uh, that's assigned or the pawn that's assigned if you're using pawns gets updated that the homeowners come in and tune to their home valuation, right? It prompts us that this action's happened so we can reach out, see what's going on, adjust this evaluation accordingly, right? But it's a call to action, like a hand raiser option. Uh, and it's a specific tag. We're gonna get into the tags a little bit later, but we wanted to be very intentional about when the consumer is doing things on this report that we tell the agent what part of the report were they interacting with. This might've been fine, all right? But they may be interested in what's going on with the market trends. Is it the right time? Is it the wrong time? I see that it's been up and down over the year. Literally call to action where they can help understand this part of the value or of the of the process of home values, the market trends. Uh, interactive tools where they can play with if their home sold for X and they owe Y, what is their equity, right? Another call to action in here. One of the most unique things, we've got some insane tools. I know I don't think most of you actually use YLOPO yet, but we've got a standalone tool called the Buyer Heat Map. This is another one Barry and I worked on where manually prior to this, we were going in doing reverse searches in our database to find out how many likely buyers we had for a certain property. Well, YLOPO is now going into the database, going into the activity. Now, activity of leads, whether you've sold them homes or not, we all have leads, I think, in our database we haven't sold homes to. They have value if we're leveraging it, right? The seller report is going into the database, finding active uh, people in our database that are looking for homes similar to this address, putting them into a report, letting this potential seller know, hey, we have potentially 37 homeowners or buyers looking for homes near this one, right? Uh, maybe they're not wanting to go live on the market. We give them the option to ask you to schedule private showings with those people. This is now, do you do every one of those people want to go look at this home right now? No. Uh, but this is a conversation starter with the homeowner to get in the door. Hey, Grayberry, it looks like you're interested in scheduling some private showings for the people in our database that may be interested. When's a good time for me to come by and preview that so I can make sure I know which ones it'd be a fit for, right? An opportunity. Yeah, the door. Go ahead, Barry. Okay, I was just going to say there is currently no other a provider or website that allows the consumer to see an active map yeah. of buyers. And so this is a very unique value proposition for your database that is not only really important to a homeowner, but it is a game changer because we have a document that you can bring to your listing appointments that Gabe and I developed that you can actually walk in and everybody, all agents say, oh, I got buyers looking for your home. Nobody walks in with a literal map that says, hey, here's a picture of my database searching for a house like yours. I'm telling you all right now, the sellers are like, sign me up. Nobody yeah. else has anything like that. It sets you apart. And now we provide it automatically in this seller alert. Yeah. Uh, it's a game. Nobody does it. Nobody provides it. Nobody gives uh, that uh, that homeowner the opportunity to ask you to start scheduling showings, right? We got to get you in the door. And, and they may not want a list, right? Uh, and I just, for sake of time, we're down to 15 minutes and I don't even know we're halfway through the slide. So a lot of these tiles, everything's triggered. We're going to go to the tags here in a little bit, including available homes, sold, pending, all of that, that may be impacting their value and then certain call to action. I do want to jump in real quick. Uh, and I've created different lists that show me all the people um, interacting. I mean, this is the one I just clicked on a second ago. And even since then, somebody else has come in looking at the report. Everything's in real time. I wanted to show you, uh, we're also giving you access to get this report in merge fields within Follow Up Boss. Um, so that way you can build it into text templates, email templates, everything that you need to get it out there to get it seen. So it's not just being delivered by YLOPO, as well as the ability it, we get it. These things are off sometimes. If you see one is off and you don't want it to go out that way, I couldn't do this with HomeBot. I can literally now go in and say, you know what? I know this area. I want to change this to, you know, 400,000, whatever the number is. Whoop, let me put a four in there. 
and I want the high and low range to be whatever it is, right? You're able to edit all of this information and get it sent back out to them. So we're giving you a lot more flexibility uh, and insights into that activity. So if you want to throw back up the slides, I think the next few slides show some of the tags and all that. But the idea is getting a report uh, that's interactive, that your consumers want to open, they want to update, uh, and then alerting you of all the different sections in there. Yeah, here's some of the stats if we want to go over those, but the deliverability, right? We brought this in-house now. We know who we can get it to, what's going on with them. We're getting a higher deliverability as well as the CTA. So the 9% is the one that I'm excited about because before we are just getting a lot of engaged, engaged. Well, that's great, but I don't want just engagements. I want certain call to actions like change my value, scheduled right. showings. Um, I've done updates and upgrades to this home, right? Uh, what does that change my value? What's going on different in the market? All of those are now call to actions on this report. Uh, and then I think we go to the next one there now where we can go through and start ta tagging all that information. So really, yeah, if you want to stay there, if, if you're interested on getting a full or done, I'm, we're doing a highlight for time on how deep this is. You guys can scan that QR code. They'll actually give you a full demo. I skipped a good chunk of it. Like I didn't show you the update section. I didn't show, show you some of the others, but all the different parts of this report and this experience, you know, is, is part of your package here at Ylopo. Uh, yeah. In addition to seller experience, uh, Zudilio, uh, I think Barry's got a, a slide of that where uh, we're also packaging in uh, Zudilio. Now, depending on your users, this can save you anywhere from a hundred and I think it's $30, $150 upwards of $600 a month um, right. because we're going to cover cash offers here in a minute. We want to get more sellers, more uh, opportunities for your listing partners. Uh, people are interested. Hey, if I sold right now, what could I do? If I don't want to go through the traditional methods, what is it? Most teams, agents, uh, don't have an investment firm or enough solid investors to advertise to truly have cash offers at their fingertips that they can generate within seconds. We have now partnered with them to create you guys accounts. So you have the cash offers, you have programs available to give them a good chunk of their equity. And then the rest after their next, all of these are built to where you don't get cut out. If your uh, leads, your people take any of these, you're still getting paid. This is included in it. They provide all the training. We're not going to go much deeper on that. But this segues us into what we are helping you with, which is more cash offer opportunities and leads. Yeah, so we're generating cash offer leads. So these are homeowners that want to get an offer for their home. And a lot of markets don't have open door. They don't have access to institutional investors. So we brought institutional investor, investors to our users. As yep. Gabe said, $500, $600 a month on, for teams. $150, $200 a month for individual agents. And we're able to get this to you included in the YLOPO platform when you're running cash offer leads. So now when you call a seller, you don't have to tiptoe around the offer part. You can say, I can get you three institutional offers in 24 hours. When can I stop by? That's what we do, right? When when can I stop by? We walk the home and candidly, a lot of times we just, uh, we list the home in the MLS ourselves. but uh, every business is different. Um, so cash offers, we are empowering our ads for you by providing you access to institutional money to be able to help your sellers sell their home quickly and still get a commission. If you're interested in learning more about the cash offer lead system, uh, you can you know sign up for the uh, training and and uh, to get access to the beta. Um, this is for current users, but uh, if you're not a current user, somebody from the sales team will will link up with you. Um, uh, you know, there are a little bit of like, if you're in a really small town, you might find that we don't have enough on the internet. Uh, there's not enough people searching for, to sell your home via cash. Um, but that's something that the marketing team can talk through with you. If you're looking at adding cash offers to your lead gen sources. Um, so then what we do is with the, the, the seller alert, Gabe very clearly went over all these buttons that are on this alert. All of them go into tags in your CRM. And so what we've done is we've created lists in follow-up boss. Uh, if you don't have follow-up boss, you can add it um, to where it's a CRM, customer relationship management platform. And the way that I explain it, Ylopo generates 
and, and gets the attraction of people. We call those leads and they bring them to you, right? Well, when we say they bring them to you, that's in your CRM. And that's where we help you organize them. And what we've done is if the lead is clicking on different buttons within the report, it adds these tags. And then you're able to create these lists that are actually able to help you dial in your outreach. Uh, so there's uh, high intent. When they click, call me, email me. I want to bring buyers by, right? That's a high intent lead. If they say, you know what? I, I like all the info on, on the equity and my home value, but wow, look at this home on 123 Smith Street. This is a moving list, you know, because they're looking at buying something new. If they're engaging the data, playing with the equity, manipulating what the condition of the home is or bedrooms and bath, it's going to show into another list, seller here to help. And then there's just the general engagement, which candidly, I have a big team. We've been focused on general engagement. That's that's what we've been doing. Then we've created automations in follow up off. So based on specific behaviors, emails go out, right? So if they're just engaging the equity, a series of emails go out, right? And here's an example. Hey, I'm checking, I'm reviewing the home value for all my clients in 123 Smith Street market area. And there's been some interesting developments that could impact your home, what your home is worth. I've been sending out an equity report to your email, john at gmail.com already, but I wanted to discuss a couple items that I think you'll find interesting. Here's the link to the report again. And then it actually puts the link to the report in the email campaigns. You can edit these yourself inside of your CRM. Here's another one. I already emailed you, but here's the report. There's some factors that could impact your home value. And these emails trigger off of consumer behavior. And I love this year's videos. We're giving you guys content and things to push out. Maybe you want to start doing some of your own lead generation or talk to your existing database, whatever it is. This is a, an example of one of the videos that we created, I think, around cash offers that are branded for you that'll have your logo. I think, I think it's playable, right, Barry? Yeah, I'll go ahead and try to play it. Need to sell your home fast? You guys stressed over making repairs or cleaning for showings get a cash offer for your home instead skip the stress get the cash yep so these are going to be all branded to you the agent your team all of that so just additional tools again to where if you already have cash leads coming in that's great you want us to generate some and you're in a market where we can do it and they'll be up front with you as barry already highlighted great we'll do that you all want videos talking about this option since you've got Zudelio or maybe you have your own investors. Fantastic. We've got you covered there as well. Uh, and then AI, right? Now you've got these coming in. We've talked about some of the nurturing and helping you guys out. Uh, Barry and I have also spent countless time and hours looking at text, writing different texts based on behavior to now start going out. Uh, based on certain activities. So when we are redesigning the seller experience and we start talking about not only just getting you guys tagged so you know what part that they're clicking on so that you guys can reach out, but now so that we can have AI, have Raya reaching out based on the different sections as well. So I think this is one uh, based on that heat map section when they inquire about private showings, we even have AI now hitting those people, shooting texts, texts out to start those conversations. So now you guys can even step in, just take those over and schedule the appointment. Yeah, and um, we've got four slides left. So if you want somebody from uh, our sales team to reach out to you, why don't you just type in the chat help and then somebody is gonna reach out to you. Um, so just type in the word help and that way we know that this is something you have more questions about uh, before we end the webinar. But I do wanna say that uh, AI Raya's SMS, which is Raya's our AI texting, is sending out text messages and converts about a third of conversations that she has to appointments. This is generally across buyer and seller leads. And I'm not including stops. I'm talking about the people that actually respond, right? Yeah. And it's true AI. So if AI is uh, not able to understand what's being said, we leverage chat GPT, right? If, it, if they say something crazy like, you know, when we say, do you have a home you want to buy? And they say, well, uh, my car just broke down, right? Well, we haven't scripted for that, right? So we use we use ChatGPT and injects into the AI and is able to convert the leads. And with this scenario, these are seller lead texts, right? They're engaging the report and reaching out. So we're also allowing you to import your old database. So if you have homeowners, you can import homeowners into this, into the Wailopo ecosystem. We'll run ads. 
uh, for certain lead sources, we'll send the seller alerts to them. And you can do um, uh, up to 10,000, right? Um, and uh, if you do have more than 10,000 seller leads in your system, good for you. <laughs> you will pay a little bit more money. That would be not the normal. Uh, I don't want to go out on a limb. I think sales here, but I think I heard that that might, there might not even be an over 10,000 uh, cost on that. So, okay. Sorry well, if, uh, I... if you ask anybody, if you got more than 10,000, just say Gabe told you. Yeah, I think Gabe said so. <laughs> Love it. Uh, other lead sources, right? So you can auto import right now lead sources into Ylopo so that Ylopo can run ads. So I have, if I have a, a lead source that's not Ylopo for seller leads, I can auto import them. Ylopo can send the seller alerts to them um, and run ads to them and Raya can engage them. So that's that's coming soon. Uh, I'm excited about this. So this this kind of is a new dimension for Ylopo. So when if we have a homeowner lead that comes into your system in the next, uh, the third quarter of the year, we're going to be able to append data to that lead. So the lead comes in, They John Smith that owns 123 William Street. What we're going to do is we're going to keep track of the equity that they have. And when we see a percentage change in equity, we're going to notify you. We're going to text you and email you and say, hey, John's property on William Street did have 50,000 of equity. Now it's got 75. You might want to call and just do a checkup on John. And the other ABM data that we're doing is title data. So this would be demographic data about, you know, in this example, John Smith on William Street, maybe he had a baby, maybe uh, he just graduated from college. There's all kinds of life events that indicate that this person is probably going to want to move soon. And, and, and Wailoko is going to be adding that data automatically into all of its homeowners. So scoring it um, uh, and giving you data to arm that communication. Looks like we did have a... a yeah, somebody's asking if we can use, uh, and I think that's the last slide. So we want to make sure we have a couple minutes for questions here as well. Uh, can we use AI? I think it meant FISBO is what I'm thinking that yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. FISBO. Um, so we don't current. Well, actually, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a stab at this, and you could, because in essence, if you get if you see FISBO addresses and you have contact information for them, obviously you got the address. If you have the ability to get their email in, maybe you spoke with them and get permission to email them updates or whatever. Get them into the seller experience. They can begin it. If they start interacting with that report. AI is going to hit them that way. Now, yeah, I don't. Yeah. We have a way that you can just take raw data. Here's a bunch of FISBOs that didn't opt in. That's mm -hmm. not going to work right. We are uh, diligent about making sure we're also not getting uh, ourselves or, more importantly, our clients in trouble with texting and reaching out to people that have not opted in and not done the right things. Uh, so, well, so, yeah, I mean. Um... It's 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 illegal to text somebody that hasn't opted in for from a marketing from for AI like you can't do that. But what you to you to answer your specific question, yes, you okay. can use AI for FISBOs. The way that you would do it is you would upload a database of for sale by owners into Ylopo and run remarketing ads to them. So that those videos that I was telling you about, we have all kinds of remarketing ads that they can start to see instantly. And this is like pennies, right? You upload this database, you start running ads. When they click on the ads, they opt in and AI can start texting them and seller alerts can start being emailed to them. And you can start calling them and saying, hey, my assistant sent a text and we just sent you the seller alert. Give me a call. I've got buyers looking for your house and I just emailed them to you. That's that heat map report I was just telling you about. So for FISBOs, the heat map report, crushes because everybody says they have buyers for the FISBO. You've got a graphic that you're sending to them. So yes, there is a path where you can upload FISBOs and expires and run ads to them and get them to opt in. That's no problem because now yeah. you're in compliance. I have like that heat map, QR codes on postcards to FISBOs. As soon as they scan it and they opt in, then yes. I just want to be clear. Though, you can't just send us a non-opt in and then do it. We don't want to get you in trouble. So yeah, love right, that. Right. Any other questions, guys? We, we've still got a couple dozen people on here. Any other questions you guys have for us? You've got a link there if you're interested in the on-site in-person in Austin. We had a few people say they're in Austin. Check that out. 
Yeah, exciting times to be a Y Local customer. I've never been more optimistic about the roadmap. So, um, so I'm pumped, Gabe. As as always, man, it's a it's a pleasure doing these with you. I know, uh, Mickey. I haven't seen you in forever. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. All right, sounds good. We're gonna go take a nap, and uh, we're gonna see you in the next webinar. All right, guys, have a great day. Guys, <laughs> thanks. Bye. -bye. All right, bye.